Today on the Tech Bytes podcast, sponsored by Fortinet, we're going to dig into Fortinet's switching and wireless LAN portfolio. And you might think of Fortinet primarily as a firewall company, but they'd like you to know they do much more. Our Fortinet guests are Peter Newton, he is Senior Director of Products, and Ben Wilson, Field CTO. Uh, Peter and Ben, welcome to the podcast. And as I alluded to in the intro, Fortinet's probably best known for firewalls and security, but you do also have a switch and YLAN portfolio. We're talking branch and campus here. Is this something you've been doing a while? This is a new addition to the portfolio. What are we talking about? Our switching and wireless, we've actually been close to 20 years uh, in this space. Uh, so this is a, a long time effort. Uh, and it's one that's quite successful for Fortinet. It's actually uh, behind our firewalls. It's the second largest product area in terms of revenue for Fortinet. Hmm. Okay. Now, that is a little odd for me to hear because I see so much of us talking about Fortinet and the 40 security. So we talk about the 40 gate, we talk about the the security fabric a lot in previous shows. Why Why do you think we don't necessarily always hear about the Fortinet as the branch and the, the campus solution? I think the reason that the switching and wireless doesn't get the same amount of billing is, you know, we're known as the firewall. That's uh, something that, you know, we really shine at. Mm. Uh, however, our switch and wireless business, as I've mentioned, is is quite sizable. And it's growing at multitudes of the, the industry growth rate because as customers are seeing what we can do with a switch and wireless, uh, they're really gravitating towards that solution. So um, it's, it's purely an oversight if yeah. we haven't mentioned it enough, uh, but clearly it's something that customers uh, look to and appreciate. So I'm guessing then, you know, if Fortinet would be saying to customers, we're making an argument here around a convergence of security and networking, is that the case? Yeah, that's really actually why we got into it in the first place, as I mentioned almost 20 years ago, is we recognize the need to provide that security, not just on the WAN interface, but throughout the LAN network. And the way that we've architected our switching wireless products, they're actually managed by the FortiGate, and we can apply those security policies, those firewalls policies down to the switching level, down to a switch port, down to an access point. So you're actually able to provide pervasive security throughout the LAN network. Right. At the same time, we've yeah. integrated the management of it so that it's easy to do that. Now, this is really interesting because I was reading the design guide preparing for this. When you connect a 40 switch to the 40 gate, which is the firewall and the switch, and you connect them together, you can actually use a feature called 40 link, which actually stacks them together and turns them into one logical management unit. Yeah, that's the, the magic uh, secret sauce uh, behind the curtain, so to speak. Mm. 40 link is our proprietary protocol that enables that tight integration, really brings those switching and wireless into the security fabric mm. uh, and makes them an extension of, of the firewall. Right, so that includes the wireless as well. So it all stacks together into one management and you can actually be configuring the AP security policy or can I configure the whole AP from the FortiGate firewall? You can do it all. Our FortiGate actually has a full wireless controller built into it. It's got mm -hmm. a full switch controller built into it. And that really enables you know both easy management because you've got a single interface that you're dealing with. But it also is great when it comes to uh, you know debugging and understanding what's going on because... You're, you get all the information from the security side of things, mm -hmm. uh, the wireless side of things, the switching side of things available uh, for analysis. So you're not stitching together security policy from the AP to the switch to the firewall. This is all done from one console effectively. Yes. And you, you tend to get better security policy if it's all in one place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is there an operational benefit to putting it all into the FortiGate? Clearly, there has to be. One place to visit, one place to configure one place to deploy uh, effectively means that it makes it extremely simple from a, an operational um, perspective. Uh, and also from an architecture perspective, whether you're, you can tunnel everything, you can bridge everything locally. We have multiple ways um, that can work perfectly with different architectures because one architecture doesn't fit all for all the customers. So it's not like we're trying to force anybody down a particular route to design a network in a particular way. Um, we just give them the maximum flexibility with the easiest operational and lowest operational overhead. Now, you're putting a lot of work here on the FortiGate, on the firewall functionality. So if it's going to be a wireless controller and a switch controller and a firewall controller, because it's all unified, and it's going to be the stack master as well, how does it manage to keep all that performance together? How does it manage to do all that compute and forwarding? We do a lot of offload, uh, for example, into our uh, SOC 4. Um, you know, we're big on uh, a development of our own ASICs, which has been a, a big part of Fortinet for a, a long time. 
but we have, for example, the SOC 4, um, which I think gives us 15 gigabits per second of CAPWAP throughput um, on, on a SOC 4 chip, even in the uh, the smaller devices, you know, for example, like the, the 60F, mm. uh, which is way more than, than anybody needs for a kind of small office environment. And then you move into the, the bigger devices where you've got multiple NP6 and NP7 devices, and each of those are capable of doing 30 plus gigabit per second of CAPWAP throughput. Um, you know, for the for the tunneling of the mm. uh, of the APs. So, right. in actual fact, no, it, it's not a uh, it's not a, a performance um, issue by any stretch of the imagination. It's not a bottleneck. I guess the same thing applies because if the forty gate's doing the WAN as well, because you might be doing some SD WAN or you might be doing some IPsec tunneling or handling a DDoS. This ASIC is also a part of all that processing too. So you don't overload the 40 gate yeah absolutely and it's got full capability to do all these all those things mm. um you know all at the same time and that's that's one of the drivers that customers adopt this because they they do the physical testing and they and they see it works so with the switch and the ap being unified then with the 40 gate via the 40 link functionality what about network access control how do you bring is that all part built into it as well yes absolutely we have both the 40 NAC which is a separate product, but on board the 40 gate itself, uh, we have uh, NAC policy control where we can uh, identify and do device posture and make policy decisions based on that feedback uh, that we get from both a, a wireless and a, a switch perspective. So, you know, I think it's, I think one important thing to, to mention here is that as a company, Fortinet, we don't really do feature licenses. Mm. So when something's built into the 40 gate, it's built into the, built into the 40 gate. So we're able to deliver all of these, all of these things without people coming across barriers, so to speak, shall we say. So what you're saying there is you've got once you buy the product, you get all the features. This isn't a multi-licensed, tiered licensing, subscription a licensing. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I, I mean, I've I've been in wireless, you know, for 20 years, worked for several wireless only vendors. And, you know, one big thing that used to um upset me uh, when I was a systems engineer was um, having to try and sell customers AP licenses mm. on a controller. You know, mm. they've bought a controller which says it'll manage whatever, pick a number, 5,000 APs, and they've bought 2,000 APs piece of hardware, and then they have to buy a license on top of that in order to get those to work. It didn't never made any sense to me, and that was a really refreshing approach that I think we've got here is that we don't license APs. We don't, you know, license yeah. switches, um, so to speak. It's just all built in. So what I buy the product, I've got all the functionality we've talked about, which leads me into the bigger issue. If I've got a lot of branches, if I've got a branch network and I've got APs and switches in multiple branches, can I manage them all as one thing? Is there a management tool that Fortinet's got that can do that? There is, and it's called... 40 manager. <laughs> How go. did I know? I was going to, I was going to yeah. guess, but I thought, no, I'll leave it for you. The, the 40 manager. Now this is, this is a tool that actually sort of sits across all of the 40 net product suite, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, if we, if we take a step back over the course of several years, originally it's designed to manage 40 gates. Okay. Mm. That was its initial, uh, initial thing where it allows you to, um, condense and manage multiple policies, send out configurations to, you know, tens of thousands of 48s. As more items have been added into the 48, more features have been added into the 48, you can control all of those policies. You can control switch mm. and AP and you know, 40 extender, for example, all those various things, all through 40 manager. But not only that, um, if there is a specific area um, that really interests um, or people see a benefit of, let's say, for example, AI operations, then you can get a, uh, a management extension appliance, an MEA mm. for 40 Manager, which plugs in um, called 40 AI Ops, and that takes all of the information that's flowing through the network and allows you to create, for example, dynamic SLAs and gives you insights into what's happening on the, uh, what's happening on the network. Now, some customers have a real drive towards that. Some customers don't have a real drive towards that. But I think mm. the key thing is, is that we give them the flexibility to be able to build it as they need to build it out for what they want to be able to do. Okay. So we just heard the buzzword compliant AI ops. Can you drill into that a little bit more? Because that always causes people's eyebrows to go, yeah, okay, AI, what do you mean? Oh yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think the term is AI watching that we, yes. uh, <laughs> uh, that we, that we hear, hear a lot of um, out there. If I just 
touch briefly on what AI means to us. I mean, we've got the, the 40 Guard Labs, which deals with 10 billion plus security events uh, and feeds and everything a day. You can't possibly do that on a individual, you know, human basis. You have mm-hmm. to have um, AI and machine learning to be able to analyze all those and become the market leader in that area um, that we have. So it's a case of adopting that technology and adopting what we've learned there and then applying that to looking at network traffic, to looking at, for example, you know, why is this client, uh, what experience is this client specifically having from various different things, you know, the standard things like RSSI, but then you've got to look at ping, latency, jitter, all of these various things to manage what the experience is about. And then to be able to predict what's going to be able to happen and make sure that the network is configured in such a way to be able to cope with it. So this is really the challenge for branch networks and and having the firewalls all around and and having, whether it's SD-WAN or VPN backbone, connecting them all together. How do you know what's happening out there? And then there's things happening out there. Can you be around 24 hours a day to watch them? And as people go into remote work and do time shifting and branches work on weekends more and all that sort of stuff, you start getting into a situation where you want a certain amount of things to just happen on their own. You can't, that there's so much more diversity in security, right? So you need some sort of operational support. And although we call it AI, it's just basically software that does certain things for you that you know need to be done regardless. Is that basically it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you think about it, that's really the whole idea behind the security fabric. What you just Mm -hmm. described then, you know, the security fabric um, is all part of being able to get data from multiple places across the network infrastructure, whether it's SD-WAN, whether it's wireless, whether it's switch, whether it's mail, you know, all these various different things, we can bring all of this data in together. Mm -hmm. And this is where we really see the convergence of both security operations and network operations uh, into one Mm -hmm. with the security fabric, because you can bring that all together and give a holistic overview, which makes uh, decision-making easy. And and just on that automated piece, Mm -hmm. You know, there's different feedback from different customers. Some customers like the idea that Mm. something else is making decisions for them. Some definitely don't like that. So the idea is, is that you give them a system where they can choose the level of of automation that they want. And uh, and that's, that's the idea. So this applies to the campus as well. So this applies to the to the APs, to the switch ports on the switches that you're putting out there. So this this LAN equipment that we're talking about is in the security policy as well. You can actually do micro segmentation at the edge. You can have multiple VLANs, workstation controls, all that two factor authentication, identity management. That's all part of this. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's all built into into the forty gate. You know, uh, and then obviously we have. Um, specialist products which plug into the 40 gate to you know a- enhance yeah. those um, particular areas so we have 40 authenticator for example which does a you know a, a lot of authentication uh, pieces mm. would be a, you know one that I would just mention mm. but yes the the beauty of it is is that it all scales from branch right the way to mm. to campus we've got customers with tens of thousands of access points um some of them split between, you know, thousands of uh, 40 gates, which are all managed centrally. Some of them split between just three or four 40 gates. We've got customers who actually deploy 40 gates as a wireless and switch controller first um, uh, uh, because they see the they see the benefit in that and then bring the security in later. Hmm. The beauty is the flexibility to be able to be all yeah. things to all people. Yeah, I guess what I was driving at was we've got the switch there, we've got the AP, it's stacked with the 40 gate, but I've still got, I haven't lost the switching functionality or the wireless features. I've still got NAC, I can still do micro segmentation based on identity. It's just all integrated into the 40 gate firewall. Absolutely. Hmm. And you're actually removing boxes from the network at that point. You know, we, yeah. we did a refresh at a school district and they went from having a firewall and a wireless controller and then a separate management system for their switch infrastructure as well, all down into a, a single box, mm. which not only gave them an operational advantage, but from a security perspective, they were able to have consistent policies everywhere and bring it all back to one mm. place for ease of use. So if we're talking about wireless LAN equipment uh, very quickly, does this mean uh, you guys have Wi-Fi 6E in the portfolio or is that coming? 
we're shipping Wi-Fi 6 to today. Wi-Fi 6E is coming out very shortly uh, indeed. So, uh, so yeah, we've got a, a full portfolio of, uh, of wireless access points, both indoor and uh, outdoor. Uh, and, you know, two by twos, four by fours. We've actually got three and four radio um, access points as well. And one of the, I think one of the cool things that we do with our access points, we have a three radio access point where you can turn all three radios into service radios. So you can have a 2.4, a five low and a five high configuration. Now, why would we, why would we want to do that? Well, this kind of goes back to the AI ops thing. And when, for example, um, uh, you have, a large spike in a number of users, it means you can actually change the configuration of the AP to prioritize capacity. So you may have a, a standard as a 2.4 and 5 or a dual 5 gigahertz AP and have the third radio as a scanning radio. Right. All of a sudden, you get a load of people come in. You can reconfigure it on the fly to pull up extra capacity. All right. Well, that does wrap up our time with Fortinet. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Peter and Ben. Uh, if folks want more information, where should they go? You can find information specifically around our LAN Edge solution at fortinet.com slash LAN Edge. All right, that's fortinet.com slash LAN Edge. Uh, thanks again, uh, Peter and Ben, for being with us. And thanks to Fortinet for being a sponsor. And thanks to you for being a listener. If you like this episode, you can find many more fine, free technical podcasts and our community blog. It's all at packetpushers.net. You can follow us on Twitter at Packet Pushers. Find us on LinkedIn. Listen to us on Spotify and rate us on Apple Podcasts. Last but not least, remember that too much networking would never be enough.